Hello everyone, welcome back to The Last Adore, Chapter 3, The Four Witnesses. Okay, so before starting, I was looking around for what exactly to do next, because I was kind of stuck. Well, I think I just found it. Inside of the house, there's a coat on the wall. And I just went to look at it, and it says, as you see here, an old worn-out coat hangs on the rack. In one of its pockets is a pair of gloves. Right, so this, I did not realize you could interact with this. There we go, now I have some gloves, and I'm pretty sure I know exactly what to do with them. Because, I remember that there's supposed to be something in the fireplace. In which room is it? Is it right? Yeah, right here. But he needs something to cover his hands with, to get it out, of course. Otherwise he would just burn his hands. So this should be it. Mm-hmm. Excellent. It's a spherical piece of metal, a doorknob. Yes, that, that, is, that is what a doorknob is. A spherical piece of metal. And of course, I know exactly where to put that. Into the door that leads to the, to the laughing man's room. <laughs> Let's see if he continues to laugh when I come inside. <laughs> Hello! What exactly is so funny? Of course, he's behind some sort of a curtain, which is creepy. Let's look around first. Wooden planks are blocking the window. I can only see part of the outdoor. A big wall mirror. It's so covered in dust that I can't recognize my face, though. The laughter is coming from behind the curtains. I can faintly see the outline of a figure on the other side. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> the record is scratched. It's repeating on loop. There's a record of someone laughing and that's what I've been hearing? And who is this? It's a porcelain doll with lifelike proportions. The face has been removed, leaving her featureless, but its wig shines brightly, as though of human hair. That is creepy as hell. A life-size porcelain doll with its face removed, and a record with some laughter looping constantly on it. What the hell? With the hair removed, the doll is even more unsettling. Can I stop it? Oh, thank God. <laughs> okay, so where did the man go? He went into this room, right? Where did he go? He couldn't have gone out the window. It's boarded off. Okay, well, let's complete this representation of his... What was she exactly to him? His angel, I guess? Daphne, you're back! Are you a figment of my, mel of my melancholic mind? Are you the ghost of my dying music? No, it doesn't matter, because you are with me again. And I now know exactly how to compose my masterpiece. Please, take my violin. Now that I have completed my work, I no longer have a use for it. It needs to be with her. Go to the mausoleum and place the violin where her heart lies. The angel of my music will guide you. Here, take the key to the mausoleum, my friend. I must go. Let music and singing surround you, my man. Look. Wait, what? Look for the Smurg. What? I don't know what that means, but I'm going to write it down. Smurg. Smurg. Well, apparently that's reignited his ability to, com to compose music. 
Good luck, my friend. I'm sure it'll be a masterpiece. Into the mausoleum we go. Here lies an angel. Great pity must be felt for those who did not hear her. Pity for those not blessed by her naive grace, not shaken by her heavenly voice, trembling their souls into divine ascendance. Here lies Daphne. God rest her soul. The sarcophagus is broken. Where on earth is the coffin? Who could have done this? So someone took her out of her sarcophagus, out of her coffin? Why? Why the hell would you do that? Is that a break in the wall? A trail of soil leads from the sarcophagus to this hole. Was the coffin transported through here? So someone busted her out and just broke through the freaking wall? What the hell? What is going on? Also, where was I supposed to put this violin? Is it here? I was asked to leave the violin close to Daphne's heart, but she isn't here anymore. True, I need to find her first. I can see the mausoleum's dome from here. Bookshop, the great god Pan. The great god Pan. That's a strange name. I can't see anything through these dirty window panes. Right, it looks like she was carried inside of here. I see, like, scratch marks on the ground. It's locked, of course. What was that? That was exactly my thoughts. Maybe I can see something if I look into the keyhole? <laughs> okay, have a look. Oh god. Darkness there, and nothing more. Hmm. Again. Can I shine my lantern through it? Well, that wasn't a warm welcome. Do I really want to enter after that? It's the eye. No. I, I really don't want to go inside. Do I have to? Maybe I don't. Maybe I do. Because that just takes me back to where I was before. Okay, here we go. Looks like a library. Well, I mean, looks like a bookshop, because that's what the name was outside, Marshall. He just said it was a bookshop. Of course it's a bookshop. Jesus. <laughs> anyway. What is that? With the help of River, the Nyad, Daphne hid from the sun in the shadowy mists. She changed her skin from uh, for strong bark so her heart was forever concealed. Her dance frozen in the rustle of a thousand leaves. Something tells me that's a hint for some sort of a puzzle. It seems like it because it has strange capitalization with the help of River. 
hit from the sun. Books with unpronounceable names in dead languages. A lot of dusty books. Anatomy, history, science. Myths and legends this time. Norse tales, Greek, ancient Sumerian, others that I don't recognize. Some of these scripts I've never seen. Is that the man that I've been chasing? I think that's him. Hello? I beg your pardon, sir, if I have startled you. <laughs> I love that one of the dialogue options is man of weird appearance. <laughs> Have you seen a man pass this way? He is red-haired, tall, and wears a cape. Oh, if I'm, if I'm asking him, then I guess this is not that person. Oh yes, I know of whom you speak. I see him here from time to time, perusing the books. He would pick one off of the shelf, glance at it, and then put it back. He and I never spoke, though. Why do you ask? Can you tell me which books this man perused? Let me think. Ah, yes. I recall his looking at unexplored places of the Empire. An excellent tome. Very revealing and very rare. This bookshop is very fortunate to have a copy in its, in its collection. I'm not sure where it is now, but I'm sure it can't be far. Okay. Are you the owner of this bookshop? Oh, goodness, no. The bookshop doesn't belong to anyone, not since I found it here. I am just a guest, an explorer of these ancient tomes. Strange. A bookshop with no owner. What are you doing here, sitting in the dark? Why, I'm reading these marvelous books. In the dark. But how can you see the words without any light? That is the only way to see them, really. That is, if you want to see the words on the other side of the page, the words from the shadows. Shadows, shadow always hides from the light, you know, so they can only be read in darkness. Okay. Pardon the interruption, sir, I will leave you to your reading. Strange. Well, you just sit there reading your books in the dark. I need to look for that book he just mentioned. Something about Mysteries of the Empire Tome something? I'll, re I'll recognize it if I see it. A painting of an old factory. I guess someone was really attached to the place. A large collection of books. That's the singing I heard in the sewers, coming from within the crack. The crack in the... in the roots. Which... I think it must be Daphne, right? Because she's the one that had a voice of an angel? But she's supposed to be dead. Dead people can't sing. Normally. I'm pretty sure that's a normal thing. Dead, dead people usually can't sing. It's been known to happen, I guess, maybe. But normally they don't sing. A book lies on the floor. Its spine reads, Unexplored Places of the Empire. A page has been marked. Well, there it is. 
The place of the eternal fog. Oh, okay. Also known as Zela, it is a unique bay in the east of Belashwar, near the jungles of Bengala. It is surrounded by tall snow-capped mountains, usually covered in mist. The waters of the bay are very dangerous and rarely visited. Hold on. So is this going to guide me of where to go in the mist? Okay, a bay. Mist. The waters of the bay. Okay, so I think I need to go towards the sound of water. That's my guess. And I remember hearing that. I remember hearing that in the fog. What did I hear in the fog? There's there's one that had the sound of ravens, or, or crows. Another that had the sound of wind. And then I think the third one was the sound of water. And it'd be some seagulls, too. So I think I, I know where to go now. What is that? Is that a spiral staircase? The remains of a coffin. It looks like it was bursted from the inside. What the hell? Like Daphne just burst out of her own coffin? This must be the tree that had the uh, roots that I saw in the... in the sewers. It's a massive dead tree. How could it have formed here inside this building and without sunlight? Good question. On the ground lies a book entitled The Songs of Zayla. The page to which it was open has been torn out, but the remaining fragment identifies a song title. The Search for Samurg. Samurg, that's what the, the guy said right before I left him. The man playing the violin. I see something caught in the branches. It appears to be a page torn from the book below. Hmm. Can I get it? No, I need something long to get it with, I think. The window is shrouded with a thick layer of dust. Not even a glimmer of light shines through. Yeah, I can't reach it. Unless I can use... Can I use the violin to reach it? No, I didn't think so. Well, down we go. A surprisingly lush vegetation covers the place. I don't recognize the species these plants belong to. This is a strange place to have in a bookstore. Or even under a bookstore. I mean, it's accessible from within the bookstore, so it's kind of part of it. A cracked wall. A long green vine has grown through it. Oh, and now we're back here. Yeah, this is the sewers. Okay. And once again, through the crack, is where the singing is coming from. The dead roots of a once great tree fill the cavernous sewer. A strange green moss covers its surface, and there is a great crack along its length. But I can't go inside. I guess it's too small? Okay, well, I don't think there's anything left to do inside of the bookstore that I can do right now. I think I need to go into the mist because I need some sort of an object to be able to get this page. Right? Just songs of Zengla. A search for some Merg. The page torn from the books below. Looks like it burned the branches? Burn the branches! Nope. 
All right, let's try to go towards the sound of water. Hopefully I haven't missed something in the bookstore. Okay, let's listen for the sound of water. The sound of a bay. That's wind. That's grasshoppers. Here we go. The sound of water. Oh, it doesn't work. Okay, I don't think I can do that yet. Right. Well. I'm supposed to put the violin close to her heart. Can I do it at the crack in the wall? I mean, I would think I would need to be closer. But... Maybe not? Let's try it. Oh, I think... is it... oh! It worked! It actually worked! The violin has disappeared amongst the roots, as if swallowed up. The trunk seems to be expanding. Oh, is it... is it alive again? The noise... that noise came from above. I think the dead tree just came alive. It's alive! The tree has grown! Some of the branches have crashed through the window and into the street. The window has been broken by the tree's branches in its sudden growth. Intense rays of light stream into the bookshop. Hold on just a second, I'll be right back. Alright, I have returned, and whatever glorious music was playing before seems to have stopped. Aww. I guess I waited too long. Alright, so I... I think I was gonna say, where did the piece of paper go? It was stuck in the branches, and now the branches have grown outside, so I suppose it's probably wherever the branches went, but... Where exactly is that? Where would I go to get behind the wall? Unless it's somewhere on the ground. No, it's just a book. Yep, just a book. I don't think it's on the ground. Yeah, I don't think so. It looks as if the tree has come alive. The branches have grown quickly. They've broken the window and sprouted outside. The sheet captured in the branches is gone now, though. And from where is that strong light coming? That's a good question. Well, let's go to try to let's go try to find the other side of that wall. Sorry, don't mean to bother you by. Shining some light on your books? I know, it's so hard to read books in the light, isn't it? There you go, now it's nice and dark again. Enjoy.
And wait a minute, what does this say again? Hid from sun in the shadowy mists. She changed her skin for strong bark. Okay, so she became a tree. So her heart was forever concealed. Her dance frozen in the rustle of a thousand leaves. I guess that was kind of a hint as to where to put the violin. So where are the branches coming out? I have no idea. I don't really have any sort of uh, spatial awareness of the layout of this place. Is it back around here? Oh, here we go. Ah, there it is. The paper sheet captured in the branches is now within my reach. On the page is a strange poem. First into the wind, they sought for the king, but lost were the birds. They wept in suffering and flew to the sea, compelled by a need. They found their silence. Their quest was complete. Oh, it's you again. Get fucking get back here, you piece of shit. Oh. We're going into the mists, aren't we? Okay, fine. Challenge accepted. This is my map, isn't it? First into the... W yep. First into the wind. Okay. And here's wind. Bingo! They sought for the king, but lost were the birds. Birds are next. What is that? Oh, it's weird. There's an examination icon here, but it disappeared for some reason. Alright, here's the birds. They wept in suffering and flew to the sea. Okay, sea. Not here, that's birds. That's crickets. So the third and last one must be the sea. Or maybe there's more than three. Wait, wait, wait. Is it here? Yeah, here we go. Okay. Here's the sea. Compelled by a need, they found their silence. Silence. What is this? What am I looking at? Is this a rock? It almost looks like there's a face up there. Is it some sort of a statue? Alright, that's not silence. That's birds. I'm looking for silence. That's also not, not silent. And, well... Actually, crickets are kind of the sound of silence, right? Like the common sort of saying, like, hearing crickets. I, I think that's a saying, isn't it? You know, someone makes a bad joke and you listen out in the audience and it, you hear nothing but crickets. It's kind of the sound of silence, even though it's not literally silent. That's probably it, but let's check the rest. Or not. This, this appears to be literally silent. Once again, let's go to the right. Okay, sound. 
Here we go. This one is truly silent. Now what? That's the end. Their quest was complete. They found their silence. Truly, it is silent. I see what look to be crumbling pillars. It's like I'm in some sort of a... What would you call this place? A very old place that hasn't been maintained. It's not the it's not the term I'm looking for. Not a very old place that hasn't been maintained. I mean, like the ruins of some sort some sort of an old. I don't know, old something. Yes, I know it's in full screen. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Flash, it's you. Ah. You again. Where'd you even go? Just back into the mist? Okay, we're finally gonna have a chat. <laughs> Your ticket, please. <sighs> My ticket to the four witnesses? Okay. Here you go. Thank you. Please come in. I would like to have a chat with you first, but apparently I can't. Hmm. I saw the four witnesses on top of the building again, but I've noticed a, a, a theme running through any views of the four witnesses, and that is that one of the witnesses seems to have no face. Remember, back in... It was episode... Uh, not episode, it was um, chapter two, where I was in the boarding school and I found that photo that had the, one of the person's faces just, like, slashed out or scratched out. And one of the statues that I just saw a second ago one of the statues of the four witnesses had its head was just like crumbled off, off off of the statue. So one of the witnesses for some reason is mysterious, but why? How come every time I see it, it's just broken? It doesn't have a face. I see there's plenty of viewers. Plenty of spectators. I guess it's time for the show to begin. But, since I am one of the witnesses, am I watching the show? Or am I performing in it? Hello, Jeremiah. I knew you would find us eventually. Welcome to our humble performance. You were there. You were part of the group. You don't remember my name, do you? I am... Oh, how do I pronounce that? Is it just Alexander? I don't know. I'm bad at pronouncing things. I'm sorry. What is all this about? What do you want from me? From you? Nothing, dear Jeremiah. It is you who came here, searching for answers. It is the same as when you joined our group. We, eat, we each came with our own reasons. Do you remember yours? What should my reason be? Hmm... True science. No, that was our friend Anthony's reason. His stubborn determination to discover the unknown was infectious. We followed him blindly. So confident were we in his determination. And there was no turning back. 
Has has Devitt's reason for doing that ever been stated? I don't remember. Philosophy. Indeed. It was our thirst for knowledge that drew us together. No one waits for us out, out there, dear Jeremiah. There is no one who will care for us when our hour comes. We had been alone until now. How did I end up in London after being buried in the boarding school? The bird protects us. It is by his design that we should meet again, but we, but we are not the only ones who take shelter beneath his wings. His influence and power is ever expanding, ever reaching. Do you not feel him beckoning? I only want to wake from this nightmare. This is no nightmare. It is a show, a performance. The truth we seek lies beyond the curtain. Now we have crossed the point of no return. The lights are on, the stage is set. And soon, you shall meet the actors. Welcome. <laughs> this belongs to you. I don't know if I want to be in this play. In fact, I'm pretty sure I don't. Can I just leave? No. No, I don't think I can. I accept my mask. Dearest Her Dr. Wakefield, If you are reading this, then you have followed my instructions to arrive at the agreed-upon address. Good. I apologize that I could not accompany you immediately. My own investigations have demanded a certain unanticipated degree of attention. I have determined that your patient, Devitt, is in serious trouble. I will contact you with more information post-haste. In the meantime, discretion is of the utmost importance. Your friend, Johan Kaufman. The adventure continues in Chapter 4. <laughs> oh, yet another cliffhanger. Every single chapter has had a cliffhanger ending. Have to admit, it really, really makes me want to see the next chapter even more. They always leave you hanging. <laughs> okay, so let's analyze Chapter 3 a bit. Let's see. Well, one of the... Well, let me just start with the beginning. The very beginning of Chapter 3 was, frankly, amazing. It was so good. The way you started out, beating your way out of the coffin that you were put into at the end of Chapter 2 was amazing. It had some brilliant sound design there. Both at the end of chapter 2 and at the beginning of this chapter. Just the way you... You, you couldn't see anything, but you heard yourself in, chap, in the end of chapter 2. Being buried in a coffin. And hearing the nails being pounded in. And in the very beginning of chapter 3, you're banging your way out of your coffin. That was... I just... I loved it. It was terrifying and desperate, and even though you couldn't see anything, the sound was enough. You knew exactly what was happening, and you knew exactly what you were trying to do. You were trying to escape. I love that. And just just the entire beginning of Chapter 3, I really, really liked, even beyond that. The way it transitioned over to you as... What were you? I think you were a younger version of yourself, and you're walking through this, like, frozen... Just, like, walking in a storm. While having flashbacks to when you were young, and being sent away to boarding school.
that was oh, I love that so much again it, a lot of it comes down to the sound design but it's more than just that I mean just the the graphic style how well executed it is and the way it was told was great a, a lot of games would do something like the beginning of chapter 3 but they do it in a cutscene and that's where I really like what they've done they don't do it in a cutscene you are playing the game they might have had, like, a long flashback cutscene movie where it shows you some of the backstory of what happened to Devitt. But no, you actually play through it. And it's just told through these little mini flashbacks that keep happening as you're walking through this... this snowstorm. And something about that, just the combination of being able to actually play through it and not just watching it, and having these little bits of backstory and the incredible sound design, something about all of that just combined to be a really atmospheric and effective beginning. I don't know if I can emphasize how much I loved the beginning of this chapter. It was so good. I almost want to just, like, play it again right now. Just the beginning part. Just to re-experience it. But I'm not sure if I can do that. I don't know how to restart it. It'd probably mess up the recording if I tried to press anything. Unless, what if I just click... Now, I'm worried if it clicks, if I click, it might just totally mess up the recording, so I won't. Yeah, just in case. But I really, really like the beginning. I've liked what they've done with the sound design for all three games, but... I think it's really become even more effective. I, I think I liked it the most in this chapter. Let's see what else. Okay, so one of the big problems I had with Chapter 2 was the puzzle design. It, the, the puzzle design in the first chapter was very good. It was solid, it was never obnoxious or particularly contrived. It, it just worked. And it made sense. In chapter 2, um, it took a really big step backwards and was very contrived and very obnoxious and really got in the way of experiencing the game and just made it very frustrating. And then in chapter 3, it's kind of in between. Chapter 1 and, one and 2, I think. First one had good puzzle design, the second one had very bad, and this one has... Eh, it, it's okay. It's definitely not as frustrating as Chapter 2, but it's also not as good as Chapter 1, so it's it's very strange what they've done with the puzzles. I mean, if anything, I would expect them to get just steadily better as they get more experience in, in making these chapters, but it's it's kind of like jumping around, you know, from good to bad to okay. Very strange. I'm really not sure why that is. But still, it's certainly not enough to ruin the game. I mean, even even with Chapter 2, which was far more frustrating than this, that wasn't enough to ruin the game, so... So in this case, it's even less troublesome for the rest of the game. But I think that's the biggest thing that I'd like to see them work on, is definitely the puzzle design. It is getting in the way quite a bit. But again, not enough to ruin the experience by any means. The strength of everything else is... is definitely enough to carry the game. No doubt about that. Yeah, I mean, it's just... aside from that, everything else just continues to be... good. Sound design is excellent. The graphics are generally excellent. Although I definitely think a little more work could be put into making things... noticeable. As far as actually being able to tell items are there rather than just being part of the background, because because everything is so pixely, it can be hard to identify an object as actually being an object. Like the coat just looked like a bunch of you know blocky pixels on the on the background, and I didn't even realize that was a coat. So that was kind of frustrating. And then also the lamp, like the lamp didn't even look like a lamp before you picked it up. So that could have definitely been designed better, just for clarity's sake. But in general, the graphics are just really good. The writing continues to be strong. It uh, continues to have a very good mystery that makes me want to see what happens next. They're very good at, they're very good at leaving little breadcrumbs and little things to, that just leave your that just leave you wanting to know more and, and I don't I don't just mean the cliffhanger ending, but just throughout. 
Like the whole scene with the doctor. Giving therapy to Devitt. And all of that. Like, what's going on with that? I don't know. But I want to know. I'm just really impressed with what they've done. I'm really impressed with this. With this series so far. See, there's something else I wanted to say. What was it? Oh, come on. Don't forget. Hmm. What was it? Hold on, I'll be back in a second when I remember it. Oh yeah, now I remember what it was. Another thing I really like what, about what they've done with the series is how much it changes with each each chapter. The first chapter just took place in one solitary location. And you had no one to interact with, no one to talk to. The second chapter took place in also one location, but... It had a bunch of people to interact with. So that felt very different because it wasn't a solitary experience anymore. And then this one takes place in a much larger area. Just a completely different place. And it also involves interacting with people a lot. And it's almost as if it's like a dream world that isn't even real. It doesn't even feel like you're even part of reality anymore in this chapter. So it, it just keeps changing, you know, it's not the same same thing every time. It'd be easy, it'd be kind of easy just to have like a formula down and just have every episode being like you explore some abandoned location or something like that, but it's not doing that. They're really changing it up with each chapter. I'm really impressed. All right, so unfortunately, um, this being the end of chapter three is all the chapters that have been released so far. The release date for Chapter 4 is stated on their website as January 2014, so it shouldn't be too long till that comes out. Should be within two months, less than two months actually. So it shouldn't be too much of a wait, but unfortunately, it will be a bit of a wait. Which is going to drive me a bit crazy because I really want to see what happens next. But I can't. We have to wait. But I will certainly be back with Chapter 4 as soon as it comes out. So that's it. In summary, Chapter 3 is, once again, more of the greatness of the first two chapters, with better puzzle design than the first. Not as... I mean... Sorry. Let me try that again. Better puzzle design than the second chapter. Worse than the first. But overall, it, that part of it was okay, and the sound design is still great. The opening sequence, just as every chapter is, continues to be great, and in this case was freaking amazing, to the point where it's one of my favorite sequences... Like, ever... <laughs> I just love that beginning sequence so much of this chapter. It's really great. And it just continues to be very solid. I'm really impressed. Once again, very impressive. So I hope you have enjoyed so far, and I will be back soon with Chapter 4 whenever it comes out.